Good morning. Wasn't our worship amazing? Can we thank our leaders? It was so good. Uh, today is Commitment Sunday, and I want to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, this is the Sunday we come together to make our uh, commitments for the mission and ministry here at Grace Church. And if you are our guest today, we want you to participate, but we're not asking you to give. So when you came in, you might have gotten a card, and we're going to bring those forward at the end of the message. But um, if you're our guest, we would love for you to come forward with a card, but we simply would ask you to say, hey, commit to praying for us. Or if you've got something we can pray for you on, we'd love for you to write that on the card. So participate in this because it's a wonderful way to, to, to do business with God, but we're not expecting you to give. That said, if you are a member, we hope you are going to give today. And if you didn't get a pledge card coming in or you didn't bring one, our ushers are coming forward and just raise your hand and they would be glad to give you a card. All right, I see one down here, a couple there, yeah, great. This is an exciting day in the life of our church, um, and so I'm glad you're here, and I'm excited what God's going to do. Now, I'm going to admittedly take a little bit of a risk starting this message, because I want to talk to you about how painful it was to watch the Eagles in their season. And, and uh, you're supposed to be in a good mood on Commitment Sunday, so I'm hoping not putting you in a bad mood, but it was such a remarkable start, wasn't it? And it was a crummy end. I mean, that, that spiral was just so bad. But I want to tell you that the Eagles are actually not at the bottom of, of the league. They didn't have the worst season. And many other fan bases have had it a lot worse than us. So here are the bottom four teams. <laughs> Notice who is not on it. The Eagles are not there. Now, if I were to tell you uh, that... The Carolina Panthers, they were a lock for winning the Super Bowl this year, this coming year. What would you say? N no way, right? <laughs> right? If I were to tell you that the person in your firm who is the lowest performer all of a sudden was going to become your best performer this year, what would you say? No way, right? Now, if I were to tell you that after not playing tennis for all the years that I have been your pastor, I used to play tennis all the time, that all of a sudden, I got a phone call and they were asking me to play in the US Open. Well, that's a quick laugh, that's not very nice. Um, and and I'll, I'll press it a little bit and I actually won a match. Not the whole thing, but I won one. What would you say? No way, right? <laughs> it's all right. I can handle it. No way, right? Now, all week you have been reading about the fall. And after last week's message on the fall and that reading where Cain and Abel, brothers, a brother kills a brother. And Noah and the flood, there was only one righteous guy in the world. And then there was the Tower of Babel where everybody wanted to be like God. If I were to tell you that God's plan for saving the world was us humans that have fallen, what would you say? No way. We are not a very good risk. I mean, we're Carolina Panther, bad risk. We're Crumpler at the US Open, bad risk. I mean, over and over again, what we're gonna read in the Bible this year is that humans blow it. In fact, we willfully go against what God wants. That was last week's message, right? We, we, we fall. But we're also gonna see that God is always faithful. And God is always pursuing us so we can be reconnected to him. And it is crazy, but God's plan to reconcile the world to him includes us. It's always been the plan. Here's how this partnership between God and people began in Genesis 12. If you're reading your foundation Bible, it's on page 14. Now remember, we've already done creation, us made in the image of God. We've done fall where we blew it and we're disconnected from God. And now we see God's looking for another way to reconcile us and it involves us, humans. Here's what it says. 
The Lord had said to Abram, now I want to say something about Abram. Abram is Abraham. That's a little confusing and we're not going to read the passage where God names him Abraham, but when it says Abram, it's the same guy, Abraham. All right. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abraham was, how old does that say? 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Now, I I like to mention that because it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, or how old you are, this plan that he starts with Abraham involves you. It involves you. Now, how does God start? He says, Abraham, go. I mean, we don't know much about Abraham. We get a few verses in the chapter before that tells us a genealogy, so we know who his mama is and who his daddy is, but that's it. But we know that God chooses him, that God calls him, and we know that God has plans for Abraham. See, God calls and Abraham goes. This is a pattern we're going to see. We started in creation, and how did creation start? It started with God's voice. He said, let there be light. See, when God speaks, he's up to something. So he says to Abraham, go. Abraham, leave everything that is comfortable to you. Leave every person that you know. Leave it all. God starts with go. And that should actually sound familiar to us. See, Jesus also said go. It was the last thing he said to his disciples before he returned to heaven. In Matthew 28, he said Go, Jesus said this, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God is a calling God. God is one who says go and when God speaks, you can't help but respond to him. In fact, whenever you come into the presence of God, God is going to do something in your life. He's not going to leave you the same. In fact, that's the way I pray every week for this worship service. I pray that you come into the presence of God here and God changes your life. You leave different. See, when God speaks, you leave different. Now, (laughs) it isn't a thing as Abraham responds that he can actually choose to do a little bit of. He can't go halfway. You either go or you don't go. You either leave your country and your family or you don't. See, this was a very big ask. And that's who God is. You're going to see this pattern throughout Scripture. God asks big He says, Abraham, go to a place that you've never seen before. Go to a place where you don't know what's going to happen. Abraham, you're going to have to trust me and trust how it's going to turn out. The book of Hebrews calls this faith. In Hebrews 11, there's this long list of people who trust and go and risk for God. And Abraham's one of them. Here's what it says. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Have you ever obeyed God and done something that was a little bit crazy? Well, this was crazy. Abraham had no idea where he was going. He had no idea what it was going to be like. It was a huge risk. And folks, this is a pattern for people who follow God. God calls and you obey. You go. You go. See, ever since Abraham, God has been asking people to go, to trust him completely as they join God in what he's doing. 
We have lots of examples of this in scripture. When Peter got out of the boat on the water, he risked. Now, that kind of went okay. We'll talk more about that when we get to the New Testament. The disciples did that. When God said, when Jesus said, I, I want you to go out with nothing. Don't take anything with you and go out. You're, you're, you're on mission for me. Paul did it when he started planting churches and everywhere he went, he got in trouble. It was not good, but he kept going. He kept risking. He kept trusting. And here's the deal. This still happens. You did it when you launched out as a church in 2018. And actually, you're called to do it every single day. See, when we are told to go, you don't have to go very far to go. Every day you're going. You were called to go to your house and go to your college and go to your gym and go to your neighborhood and go to your office. You're called to go. But there's more. God doesn't just ask big here. God blesses big. What God says is actually mind-blowing to Abraham. He says, I will make you a great nation. Now remember, Abraham is how old? 75 years old. He has no children and all of a sudden, God says, Abraham, you're my guy and you're gonna have, you're gonna be a great nation. Abraham, no one knows you, but I'm gonna make your name great. Abraham, I'm going to bless you. See, without God, there were no big plans, no big risks, but with God, Abraham goes and he becomes a great nation. He has a great name. Things Abraham can't even imagine are going to happen. But he's also quick to tell Abraham about these blessings that he is going to get. He says, Abraham, the blessings aren't just for you. The plan isn't for Abraham to keep all the blessings to himself. Abraham is supposed to bless the nations. And we get another pattern of the way God works. See, God blesses so that Abraham can bless. God gives you everything you have, not just for your own blessing. God gives it to you so you can bless the world. And when you bless the world, for God's purposes, the, the blessings simply multiply. It's, it's kingdom math. And that's always been the truth. And it's always been the plan. Now I want you to think for a minute about your blessings. I'm just going to give you three categories. God has blessed you with time. God has blessed you with talent. God has blessed you with money. Now let's talk about those. They're different for everyone. God has blessed you with time, but I have no idea how much time you have this side of heaven. I don't know. You don't know. God has blessed you with money. You have different amounts of money, but you have it. And God has given you unique talents and skills. Now, what's true about all three categories is that you have none of it except for the Lord has given it. Have you ever seen Shaquille O'Neal's shoes? I mean, here, here they are. I've actually seen it in person, one of these. Not this exact one, but another one. Do you know what size he wears? 22. Now, my son wears 14, and it is a boat. So can you imagine 22? Size 22. When you look at his foot... Inside that shoe, you know there's no doubt that God made him to play basketball. <laughs> and he's really good at it. God made Beethoven for music. Beethoven wrote nine symphonies and 32 piano sonatas and five piano concertos and six string quartets and one opera and one violin concerto plus many more. And he once said this, he said, I would rather write 10,000 notes than a single letter of the alphabet. God made him for music. 
try telling that to Shakespeare with his 37 plays and his 150 sonnets. God made Shakespeare to write. Well, God made you. He blessed you first to be forever connected to him, but then he made you good at stuff. If you're really good at closing the deal, God made you to do that. If you have a gift with children, God put that in you. If you can fix things or really love people well or run a business or recruit talent, man, do it well because God made you that way. And you honor God when you use those blessings. You honor him. See, this is the pattern. God blesses and you bless. God gives you all that you are and all that you have so that you can join him in blessing the world. When you bless the world, the world is different. And that's always been God's plan. You were made to make a difference, to be a part of what God is up to. And each of you do it a little bit differently because you have different blessings and different gifts and different passions and different experiences. So God has people in this church who just have a heart for homeless people. And they get in there and they try to find solutions. There are people in our church who have a commitment to foster kids and they are called not only to foster kids but to make the Lehigh Valley aware of all the challenges facing foster families other ones of you have this commitment to teach kids and our kid minutes kids ministry has doubled and we need you and you're doing it you're teaching kids and you connect to them and the kids get it when you're hanging out with them some of you are leading small groups and man, you're good at facilitating. Others of you, you, you get into the atrium and you light up the room. You're so good at welcoming people. Everyone who comes near you feels welcome. Others of you, man, you, you see our young adults and you come alongside and, and you mentor because you have experience. You've lived this up and down life and you wanna share ways that you can follow Jesus even when you've blown it. Others of you, man, it's not here at Grace. You go to work and your business colleagues, when something goes bad in the office, they all come to you because there's a peace in you that they want and they don't have. Or in your neighborhood, when something bad happens in the neighborhood, you're the first one there with food. You're first, well, the first one there to show up. You're kind of like a, the neighborhood chaplain. Well, however God's wired you, it is not an accident the way you were made. God did that. God made you and he wants you to take all those blessings, all those wiring that you have that's different from every other person in this room and he wants you to bless others. So I've talked football and I've talked basketball. So what's left? Baseball. I know some of you are like, you can't wait. You're counting the days till the pitchers and the catchers show up. I get it. Well, last season, I, I, I had never heard of this guy, Otani, before. You know this guy? I mean, if you missed it, he was the first player in Major League history with 10 wins pitching. And he also had 40 home runs in the season. I mean, who does that? I mean, I can't wait to see what he does this year. Well, if I had gone to John's room on my way into church this morning, it swung by my son's room and picked up a baseball. He's got plenty in his room. That baseball would be worth about 10 bucks if I went to buy it. But you put that baseball in the hands of Otani, you put it on his bat, it's worth about $35 million a year. That's what he gets paid. See, the same thing is true for you. See, you are in God's hands. And God has given you these blessings. And when you use them for him, they multiply. They multiply. It's a partnership that more than you can imagine will happen. See, with God and the gifts he's given you, you can be a part of God changing lives. 
and changing hearts and even changing human history. See, it's always been God's plan for us to be in on it, to bring hope to the hopeless and freedom to the oppressed. That's all a part of God's kingdom plan and he wants to do it through you. He wants to bless the world through you. See, God doesn't just bless big, God calls big. With Adam, you can never imagine the things that are gonna happen. And he doesn't ask you to do something on your own. He doesn't say, go figure out how to do something great. He says, no, I'm gonna lead you to it. I'm gonna call you to it. And I'm gonna give you everything you need to bless. Now, last week we started giving away these foundation deck of cards and our, 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 our dream is that you're literally, as you collect these cards, going to be able to walk through scripture and tell the story of the Bible. So last week you got the first card for Genesis and on that card it said creation and then it said fall. Well, next week you're gonna get this week and next week's card and it's still from Genesis, but the word for today is partnership. Now we're trying to create these icons and so it was a struggle. How do we have a, a symbol for partnership? And the first thing we thought of was kind of a handshake. You know, when you, when you go in to do a business deal, you shake hands. But that didn't feel right. <laughs> See, when you have a, a partnership like this, it looks like the partnership is 50-50. And that's not the way this partnership works with God. See, God is like 99.9%. And you're the 0.1%, but you're still in. See, he gives you those things so you can be partnering with him in his work. And so what we came up with was the two fingers that touch in creation in the, in the, in the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Because God's the one who, who blesses and we're the one who receive it. But then we get to be a part of what he's doing. See, the partnership is not 50-50. It is all God, really. And it's just us responding to what God's done. Without God, we actually have nothing to give. I'm looking out. I see artists. And I see athletes. And I see doctors. And I see teachers. And I see musicians. I see all you people. And God gave you all those gifts. But he wants to take them. And he wants to partner with you. He gives you everything you need so that you can bless because you've been blessed. Now we started with those three categories, time, money, talents. But actually there's one category that kind of trumps all the other categories. It's the most important blessing that you have in your life. And that's because Jesus, because of Jesus, you get to have a relationship with God. We're gonna get to that fully in the New Testament, but that's the greatest blessing you have. If you said yes to him, he is the, the greatest main blessing in your life. Because of him, you have purpose. Because of him, you have meaning. Because of him, you have an eternal, life-giving relationship with God. See, and God wants to take all those other categories. He wants to take all those other categories, all the blessing he gives, and through them, and through your life, he wants to point people to your greatest blessing, to him. Jesus said it this way, and if you've been around this church for a while, you know this verse probably by heart. Jesus said this. He says, let your light shine before people that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. See, the way the plan works is that when they see your life and you blessing because you've been blessed, when they see you using your gifts, people begin to see what a life connected to, with God looks like. See, you bless people so they see God. And by God's work, they want what you have. They're drawn to you. And they're drawn to the Jesus that you follow. See, that is you partnering with God. And we get to do that together here in the Lehigh Valley as Grace Church. Now, I've said before that the church is 
you are not a, a cruise ship. <laughs> okay, here's a cruise ship. Do you like cruises? Well, what do you do on cruises? You eat a lot. You do activities. You don't want to leave. In fact, you can't leave. That's why I don't go on cruises. You're not a cruise ship, Grace Church. No, you're, you're an aircraft carrier. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? It means that you come together each week and you worship and you grow and you know who you are and God begins to work on you and you recenter yourself with Jesus at the center of your life and he begins to work on you so you become more and more like Jesus. You gotta do that in community. But that's not where it stops. God sends you out from here on a love mission to literally shine the love of Jesus wherever you go. That's blessing the world. You've been blessed to bless the world. In a few minutes, we're gonna make our commitments to our shared ministry of blessing here at Grace. In a real sense, we use our gifts together to bless our church community, and we use it to bless our Lehigh Valley community, and we use it to, to bless the world. And we do that as we use the blessings that God has given us. But what we want to do is we want to point people to Jesus Christ with those gifts. We want to live out our mission. What's our mission? Inviting all to know the grace of Jesus. We don't want anybody to miss it. We know that's the life of lives. We know that's what people were made for. And your gifts... Point people to that. And the commitments you make today help us do that here at Grace. Your gifts help us to invite all generations to find and follow Jesus through Bible studies and through groups and through students being away on retreats, which they are this weekend, and through Alpha and through other Bible studies and groups. That happens through us working with many groups all around the Lehigh Valley to, to love the Lehigh Valley and the world in Jesus' name. Your gifts, your generosity allow us to do all of that. And as your pastor for eight years now, almost eight years, I've been amazed at your generosity. So you understand that those gifts aren't yours to hoard. Those gifts came to you from God and they, you, you've been blessed to be a blessing. I've been amazed that you know that, that you live that. And frankly, I've been amazed what we are seeing through us together committing our resources. I've been amazed as lives have been changed, as men and women and boys and girls have said yes to Jesus. And I can't wait to see what's next. So in a minute, we're going to do that. We're going to make our commitments together. But I also want you, as you make that commitment, to reflect on your own life. Not just our church's life, but your life. Have you ever thought, have you thought recently about how God has blessed you? Have you thought how God is inviting you to bless? See, my prayer in this moment is that it will actually be more like a recommitting yourself to following Jesus a recommitting of your partnering with God in the work in the world. A recommitment that everything you have and everything you are will be a part of not just you being blessed, but by you being a blessing. See, that's always been God's plan. All the way from Abraham to today. God chooses you and he chooses you with no precondition and no out clause. I, I love that about God. Because we're going to see the roller coaster of humanity as we read the story of scripture. But God chooses you. He chooses you. That's grace. And then he works in your life. And he blesses you. And then you, by faith, you go. You, you go, you bless the world, you join God in what he is doing, you become partners with God. That was true with Ab for Abraham. 
And that was true for Jesus' disciples. And it's true for you. And it's true for us. Now God could have done it without us. He didn't have to send Jesus the way he did. He didn't have to have Jesus gather a group of disciples. He didn't have to give you blessings to bless the world. He doesn't have to use you in the plan. But he does. Through God's people, more people come to know God. That is the plan. That is the plan. Now in your readings this week, you're gonna see that Abraham has his share of doubts. Abraham will doubt God's blessing and his promises that he made, especially when he and Sarah don't have a baby and they're in their 80s. They're gonna start to wonder. Abraham's gonna doubt. And he's also going to doubt when God asks Abraham to give up his son, Isaac. You're gonna read about that this week. But what you're gonna see this week and what you're gonna see throughout all of scripture is that God keeps reminding, I'm the faithful one. I keep my promises. I'm going to bless you in my time and in my way. And we're gonna see that pattern all the way. It's gonna lead us all the way to Jesus. God says, I call, you go. God says, I bless, you bless. So let's get a little practical. I want you to ask yourself two questions. First, where is God asking you to go? So you're gonna miss out partnering with God if you won't go. You're gonna miss out if you won't risk. You're gonna miss out if you don't understand that God is actually calling you to the places you are going every single day of your life. But then the second question, who is God asking you to bless? Man, this week, have your eyes open. See, it is never God's plan for you to hoard your blessings. God has some divine appointments with the people that you see every day, with the places that you go that are desperate for grace. And God's sending you to take it there. Friends, God has plans for us. He has plans for you. And as we get ready to come forward to make our commitments, and you just do that when you're ready. We're not gonna go row by row, but as you're sitting there and you're ready to make your commitment, come forward and bring it. Again, if you're not part of Grace Church, just bring forward a prayer. Bring forward a way we can pray for you. And if you've already made your commitment, some of you have already done that online, Come forward just as an act of, of covenanting. And, and you've already made your commitment, but come forward anyway. It's just a wonderful, tangible way for you to let God work in your life. But as we get ready to make those, I want you to hear my favorite benediction. It's from a Presbyterian pastor and the former chaplain of the Senate. This is what he said. He said, you go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ lives in you and has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in the grace and love and power of Jesus Christ. God, thank you for inviting us to partner with you. What a crazy plan. What a bad idea it seems to be, God, because we're fickle. But God, it's your plan. As we make these commitments to partner with you and with each other here at Grace, God, we, we pray that you would keep our eyes clear and our eyes open to see your work in the world. We pray that you would multiply not just our resources, but you would multiply your work here at Grace your work in the Lehigh Valley. God, we're bold to ask that you would show us more than we could ask or imagine. You have done that. You are doing that. And we pray you will continue to do that so that many will turn to you and know the life of lives only found in Jesus. 
God, thank you for blessing. Help us to be blessing people. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.